This is a case of a young patient that was operated a month earlier with ICR implantation for correction of minus 5 myopia. The refraction was plus 6 sphere and this was weird and the anterior chamber was a little bit shallow in the periphery with the periphery anterior synechia <coughs> as well as the ICL looked like a low volt. So I ordered an anterior segment of CT that verified and confirmed my provisional diagnosis that the ICL was flipped, was not put in the correct orientation. And this is the reason for the refractive error as we double checked the power of the lens implanted. So the plan was to <clears throat> try to restore the, the proper position of the lens without needing to explant the lens and re-implant it again for fear of contamination. First step was to inject viscoelastic, cohesive viscoelastic through the port to uh, separate the ICL from the anterior surface of the lens, then try to deliver it in the anterior chamber. At all times, you should be aware and careful not to insult the corneal endothelium or the anterior lens capsule. And that's why it's very critical to be very careful in the manipulations and using a copious amounts of viscoelastic when needed is very important. Here I'm using a fine spatula and a healing cannula to deliver the ICL into the anterior chamber through the pupil. Just flexing again the haptics to get it out. What makes this procedure difficult is that the pupil does not dilate more than what we see so it makes it a little bit difficult and tricky but with some patients the lens the ICL is delivered into the anterior chamber this is the first step then again with viscoelastic protecting the anterior lens capsule and the corneal endothelium and creating a space in the anterior chamber my decision was to try to flip the lens by flexing it like a sandwich into two halves so I can make use of the small anterior chamber space without needing to get the lens out and slowly with the help of the two anisments you can tease the lens and flip it back into the correct orientation and you know the correct orientation by the volt and also by the holes in the haptic the proximal hole should always B or the leading hole should always be to the right and the trailing hole should be to the left. Now the lens is the correct orientation but in the anterior chamber then comes the, the regular part we do in the ICL procedure. We flex the haptics to go behind the iris. I start with the both of the leading haptics, then with the trailing haptics through the main incision. See, I'm trying to flex it. Having a not so wide pupil makes it a little bit difficult, but again, whenever I feel I need to use viscoelastic, I do to protect the cornea endothelium, the anterior lens capsule, and create space. Once the ICL is put back into the posterior chamber in, fr in front of the crystalline lens then I'll make sure to rotate it to be in the proper orientation and usually this is horizontal in the 180 degrees meridian this is where we size the lens by measuring the horizontal white to white then I, I paid attention <clears throat> to the angle of the anterior chamber with viscodissection and minimal mechanical dissection. I'm trying to free the peripheral anterior synechia. You should be very careful in this maneuver, otherwise you might get severe hemorrhage, which is the last thing you need in such a case. So with viscodissection, usually I use a viscocohesive, again helium. You can dissect the synechia and open the angle of the anterior chamber. Next morning, the patient vision was restored 
and the IOL was the ICL was perfectly placed in position, and there was a lesson that we learned that we should always pay proper attention to the signs and complaints of the patient. Thank you for your attention.